Yes, look, some of it is integration and getting the cost synergies uh, out of combining back offices and so on. Uh, but, but the real benefit we see in, is in revenue enhancement. We, we've got a lot of uh, a similar customer base and we intend to leverage the combined offering of, of their expanded range of surface equipment and also to try and get traction in the underground market that we see as the real opportunities going forward. So in Africa, which territories are you specifically seeing a major growth opportunities in right now? Where are you sending your resources to? Well, Mozambique is still growing very strongly and that's on the back of the um, growth in coal in the northern part of Mozambique in the Tet province. We've also seen very robust activity in um, the Copper Belt in Zambia and the southern part of the DRC in the Katanga province. Uh, and then in Angola, it's not driven by mining, but uh, I guess with the oil price having uh, increased again, we're seeing more government funds available to restart the infrastructure development program. And so we are seeing a resurgence in activity in Angola as well. And of course, when you're talking about Bucyrus's distribution and support business, you're also looking to acquire uh, its business in Russia. Um, that still needs to be bedded down, but you're hoping to do that. How are you going to leverage off the growth that you've already seen in the region this year? I mean, uh, you know, Revenue up 28%, operating profit up 31%. Yes. No, look, it's, it's very exciting for us that Bacyrus transaction is expected to close on the 3rd of December. We'll pay out $50 million or around 436 million rand. Uh, and we will inherit about 100 people and a major service facility in a place called Novokuznetsk, which is in the heart of the Kuzbas coal region, uh, which has a number of um, both surface and underground coal opportunities. And it's really starting in that base that we intend to leverage our capability and customer relationships uh, to get further traction in growing revenues and growing profitability in, in, in that business. So it's just a case of expanding the product range, product offering, and of course moving into that new space, underground mining. Yes. I think so as far as Basiris goes, but I think in terms of the broader business, there are also a number of large projects. There's the Natalka Gold project coming up in eastern Siberia and uh, uh, the Elga Coal Deposit, which is being uh, developed by the Mitchell Group. Um, so some of these big projects will, will provide us with significant opportunities down the line. Uh, not all 2013, but, but on, a, on a sort of a five to ten year view, some very significant projects which we hope to, to win our fair share of. And of course the painful spot is still being Europe when it comes to the equipment side of the business. You've, you've gone through a restructuring phase there once again, uh, making an operating loss there um, as a result of also the restructuring cost. How is the business now positioned in light of the fact that you know Europe's back in another technical recession? Um, how are you going to see the business through uh, perhaps another few years of pain in, in Spain and Portugal? Yes, you're right. The macroeconomic conditions in Europe remain very constrained and particularly in, in our regions in southern Europe and, and Spain and, and Portugal. Having said that, uh, we've undertaken a lot of restructuring in, in that business over the last few years. The, the headcount is down from about 2,000 people to around 1,000 people. And therefore, going into uh, 2013, we're not going to have a recurrence of that 100 million in restructure cost. And therefore, I'm expecting, notwithstanding a difficult external environment, I'm expecting a strong turnaround in our profit performance uh, in that region in the year ahead. Let's move on to the automotive and logistics side of the business. Re record operating profit there, 1.15 billion rand. It was up 26% uh, of only a 12% revenue growth. Uh, when we're talking about Avis, I mean, you talk about a competitive landscape uh, and it has changed. Um, How is Avis adapting to that? Well, I think we're the market leader in, in South Africa with, with market shares of around uh, uh, 35%. But uh, nevertheless, there are some big competitive uh, players there. So it's a competitive environment, but we grew our, our um, volume which is our, our, our rental days by about 11-12% uh, this year and our rate per day uh, grew up by about 3% so it provided an underpin to improving margin and profitability in that business and then across our Avis fleet services front we won a number of new organic uh, and some small acqui acquisitive growth uh, there which underpinned the result. And you talk about moving into Ghana with the fleet service um, you know how lucrative is that territory right now you're looking to move into other um, African territories? Well, I think we, we're starting off with West Africa. You know, it's, it's a part of Africa that is growing strongly um, and Ghana, we felt, was a good platform for, for growth. So the first opportunity came up there. It's still relatively small, but I think it provides a potentially exciting platform for future growth. I suppose the big question, though, is you talk about this being the peak of the commodity cycle and you're benefiting from a demand coming through from China. Um, but given the environment right now, you've got, as I said, Europe still in this recession, uh, you know, China not growing as 
fast as it was before, but there are positive signs coming out from there. Sluggish growth globally. Um, how is Barlow World now positioned? I mean, is this the peak of the earnings cycle for you or do you see yourself positioned in the right growth territories? Look, it's, it's probably the, uh, the peak in the mining cycle, but you know, bear in mind, this is a cyclical industry and uh, we last peaked in 2008. We came off strongly in 09 and 010, somewhat of a recovery in 11, and this year we're ahead of the last peak in 2008. So we do expect uh, the mining cycle to moderate into 2013, but I think what we've got to do is look beyond that. So, so we, we are still very bullish on the long-term commodity cycle because if you look at developed markets or developing markets around the world, industrialization in China, in East Asia, in South America, in Africa is still at the infancy of its longer term growth and that is going to consume commodities over time and therefore I'm absolutely confident that while we will go through ups and downs in mining because it's the nature of the business, the long-term cycle remains intact and therefore from a Bala World Group perspective I still believe it's the right place to be investing capital. But in the short term, I mean, you, you know, what about uh, the fact that many junior miners are really battling right now and global miners are cutting back quite, uh, quite aggressively on their capex plans? Is that, has that hurt your business? It has not hurt our business in terms of the financial performance to date and that we delivered a record result. But what, what you will see if you dissect our order books is that we've seen a, a slowing of our order intake, particularly over the last six months. And so our order book levels at September this year are below where they were in March and below the, where they were in, in September last year. And that does indicate that on a short term, we are likely to see a slowing in mining equipment deliveries over at least the next six to nine months.